Okay, welcome back for video 7 of the building a real-world entity framework application using Entity Framework 6.0.2 in this case and Visual Studio 13 and the C-Sharp.net language. Now, we've talked in the past about the Entity Framework. Uh, videos 1 through 6 dealt with the framework. It dealt with uh, how we put everything together in the back end, the data layer, the database layer, uh, register, a change we made to the SQL Server. If all of that sounds foreign to you, then you need to go back and watch video 1. Uh, we're here at the Texas Lake House channel. It's pretty easy to remember. We do ask that you subscribe if you find these videos helpful or entertaining in any way. And uh, just support the channel. So go ahead and click that subscribe button and you'll be notified every time we upload these videos which is at least weekly so go ahead and click that subscribe button right quick okay so what are we going to talk about today well first of all let me show you where we are the video series is actually a little bit behind the source code and that's because with the source code i'm going ahead and doing a couple of things and some design stuff and trying a few things here and there and I don't want to put it in video and then change my mind this sucks this is good this isn't you know it's it's just not not good so uh, as things firm up I make a video about it and today we're going to talk about the report list control we talked about the people list control before this time we're actually going to talk about the report list control let me show you what that is here let's go in here and let's go ahead and debug and start without debugging and you'll notice that I have taken a little bit of lazy way out here. I've got all the pre-programmed stuff in to help you and to help me. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click login. And if you've got your database properly registered uh, with the SQL Server Express on your local machine, the configuration app.config connection string configured right, we're in business. If you don't, shoot me a message. We can do a screen share. We can do whatever we need to do, uh, get you up and running. But what we do is if you click a name you'll notice that down here it shows our reports and the default behavior is for the last week because they report weekly and it's based on the date that the report was added not the date the work was done so if we click down through here these are the people I manage uh, remember the people control smart enough to know who I manage this one doesn't have any reports bad 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 and this one has a report now the report control, if I go up here, I can go ahead and click here and I can see that the screen changes over here as well. And when the screen changes over here, this is basically what we did was behind the scene. We wrote a utility class to convert the uh, data transfer object, which is the report entry, to a double spaced or non you know you can single space you can overload it string so there's actually two controls in play here the one we're going to talk about tonight is this one on the left it is the uh, control of the hour if you will uh, the report control so let's dive right into the source code and take a look first I want to edit and you're gonna see another super secret control we haven't talked about form and it is actually we've completed the or we're in work on the add modify report so I'm going to go ahead and flag it for action here. I'm going to go ahead and save and new. And I'm going to put just a couple of things in here. And I'm not going to flag it for action. Nothing new. And we're going to go ahead and save. And I'm going to hit cancel to close off click back and we'll see that the color has changed on one of them to red and that's the one that I put uh, flag for action and this one here is just plain white uh, the control if I go through here is it as this person's manager and I review it and I save it and close it now it doesn't refresh yet I haven't got that in there but if I come back to it it's green and red so let's go here and look at the control and see exactly how we're doing this First of all, you'll notice that all of my user controls, if you watch the person control, which is video 6, uh, they're coded in exactly the same way. They expose a single event that returns, or I should say, I guess it does return, a uh, customized report selected args, which is an event arg that we just extend and add our own property to. 
and it's got a function here that manages the event handler and checks if it's null and if it's not it fires that event and that event bubbles up to this main form where we see we've just simply gone here uh, once you successfully create in your user controls folder here on the right you can see I've got the report list control they are now a component that I can just drag onto my form furthermore since that event is public we can come over here and we can go to the events and we can see that that event report selected is listed in our events list and we can double click it and actually Visual Studio will create the method stub for us and we simply insert the code and all I do is uh, some things in that main form remember we showed the two string which was uh, in there it's not going to be covered in this video It'll make it too long but it will be in video 8 where we talk about the simple magic done to do that but you have to wait a couple of days on that don't want to give it all out at once uh, and I may change something add some print controls or something to it so um, that's what we're doing here is uh, we're just showing the uh, middle pane control I'm not going to get into the weeds on that but let's show what this report list control does so that's the event that we expose and that's why we do it so that on the parent form we can know which report they clicked on because that's the one we want to show in the main window right or it's the one if you double clicked you noticed how the edit form came up right so when you double clicked it the edit form came up well that one's handled by this control not by the main form the double click and we'll see that in a moment <clears throat> you have to forgive me I got a bit of a cold so I'm not gonna edit this video it's just gonna be in there and sorry just gonna have to deal with it uh, we've got a public function also called refresh control where you send me the person you send me the start date and the end date and whether or not you want to use the date entered as the key if you say false I'm going to use the date the work was provided well this isn't new either to those of us who've been watching this series right this is right from the middleware uh, the middleware does the same thing we have a function that does the same thing so this allows us to take this control and change its default behavior from one week to one month to one year to whatever we want uh, minus date time min and date time max uh, and so all we do is we've got a property here that we maintain uh, and it's called person ID to load report for we set it to negative one which is an invalid value at first I'm big on doing that um, now one could argue well you could have done underscore P yep I could have I didn't uh, we also maintain a list of the report uh, entries that we're going to be showing on the form um, we also create a date time for the start and the end and then a use date entered as the true or false and that's what we do when you uh, overload that function send it to me I just set those properties next thing we're going to do is we have when this thing loads up we don't do anything here with the neat design mode code but I did put it there so you can see it if you chose to do something different than I've done uh, you do it here and it won't blow up your designer uh, it's just a helpful 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 call out so let's go here again to our refresh control because that's what we're calling from the main form <clears throat> so we set our properties and then we come down here and the very last thing we do is we call this function called filled tree view and in the filled tree view I guess I could have just gone to the definition here in the filled tree view and they, some say why don't you use the keyboard shortcuts why well, don't want you have to listen to the click click when I hit it uh, the filled tree view we've got the uh, get the reports from the database I always segment out my database calls so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the reports from the database and you say well why don't you assign that report or the report list that comes back to a variable well remember we have a property here if we split the screen we have a property up at the top of this control that holds those reports for us and now I can't find it but it's called results you just have to take my word for it it's up here and there it is results so all we're gonna do is here it's empty is we're going to go here and we're gonna go to the database if I go to the definition or if 
for you keyboard shortcut people. F12. We're going to go here and we're going to go, we're going to say, look, we're going to reinitialize the list just in case there's anything in it. And then we're going to say, look, if the person to reports is greater than zero, meaning it's a primary key that makes sense in the database, the start date's greater than the date time dot min and the end date's greater than the date time dot min, then we're going to go ahead and reach out to the middleware and say, get, add a range. This is, you know, for the generic list, we can do an add range. This is going to return a list. So we're going to say, get us the entries for the person that they sent us using the start date, the end date, and whether or not they wanted to use the date entered as a key. Right? Makes sense, right? Primary key, or I'm sorry, foreign key for the uh, table, start date, end date, and do we want to use date entered or date work was performed as our key? And we can go here if we so desired, hit F12, and this is, we've jumped over here, person.cs, this is in our BLL project, right here to our function, which we talked about in earlier videos, so I'm not going to get too far into the weeds with it. So let's go back here. So here we just trust we got some data, or if we didn't, we've got an empty list, uh, but we don't have a null, and if there's an exception, we show that exception. So if we come back up here, now we assume that we have a uh, bunch of data. We've done our data call out. We're going to call the begin update on the tree view reports control. We're going to clear the nodes out of it just in case there's something showing. And then for every entity we have in that result set, right, we're going to go through and we're going to say, look, we're going to create a new tree node. We're going to say if the tree if the report is reviewed, meaning the managers looked at it, we're going to set the background color of that node to light green. If it's flagged for action, we're going to set it to pink. Otherwise, we're just going to leave it whatever the default of the system is for the tree view, the tree node. And we're going to set its name equal to the primary key. My mouse is jumping all over the place today. The image index is to zero. The text is to the date entered, and the reports.nodes, we're going to add it to it, T. So we're going to have a whole bunch of parent nodes, basically. Could have used a list view, um, but I'm thinking that, and here's why I didn't, I'm thinking that one of the things we may modify in this tree view is that we have global report viewer, and so we may dump the hours and just go by date and use some link and do a join or a group by uh, day and you could see how you'd want to add all the reports under a given day for a given person if you were looking at say uh, months worth of reports six months worth of reports um, we may create enumeration that says look I'm in this mode I'm in six month mode so let's group uh, all of our reports uh, under nodes for the month by the day. So you can see why I chose to use a tree view. Uh, we're not doing that yet, but it's now there if we want to change the way that this fill tree view function behaves. And I may or may not. I haven't decided yet. And then um, we're going to end the update after we've done that. Now, the only other thing worth mentioning is that if we look here at the events, there's two events we've done the after select which means they've selected a node which means we need to what fire that event that we made public let the main form know that hey they selected a report we need to show it or do something we don't need to show it we have no clue what they're going to do with it we don't really care we're just going to pass that data transfer object through the event the args class and we are going to let them do with it what they will and the other one is the double click and the double click you'll see that I've busted a little bit my design uh, paradigm and I said look handle the edit request and if I go to the definition here I show uh, I get the selected node and then I show that report the add modify you saw it uh, we're not going to talk about it today but you saw the report and I just pass it on down and uh, this may throw some people off, but that's a shortcut to show a form uh, using this as the parent. 
So that covers it. That's, I mean, I wish I could sit here and say that the tree view was this really complex thing and that this control was complex. But remember, uh, well, I guess I have a context menu here with edit and refresh. If you click the edit, uh, it'll show the edit screen. If you hit refresh, it'll refresh the tree node. Uh, I can show you how that works. Log in. See how much nicer it is not have to type that in. If I click my name, I can right click and I can hit edit. The form comes up. I can right click, I can hit refresh, and it just repaints the tree view. No big deal. That's what that context menu does. And you can simply click on it and see its events. Handle edit request, handle edit request. No big deal. Okay, so that covers it. The report list, you've got your images, they should be here for you, you should be good to go. Project builds, um, there's nothing else to it than that. So please do click the subscribe if you didn't in the beginning. I'm showing it again here at the end. Click the subscribe button. Uh, we're going to continue to put this thing together. Probably got another week or two to go, and we'll have it all wrapped up. Uh, the videos will continue to come. They lag the source code a little bit, so don't freak out. If you download the source code and there's things in the Windows Forms project and it does things that were not covered in the videos yet, all that means is that we're doing on-the-fly design uh, as I as I go uh, I have it all sketched out where I want to go with it, but we make little tweaks as we go, and I don't want to bother you with those tweaks. So once something's pretty much firmed up, uh, I make a video on it and publish that video. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully uh, you learned something. Hopefully the source code helps you. If you have any problems with it, be sure to send me a message. And thanks for stopping by.